And by predestination, we have been programmed for series and sequence of settlements. When we talk about settlement, it's not for someone that has trouble or someone that has a challenge or someone that is in distress. If you limit it to that, you will miss out of what God has appointed for you in this service. For I know the plan that I think towards you. Thoughts of good and not of evil. To give you a future, a hope, and an expected end. It takes the settled world to drive destiny forward. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Psalm 119 verse 89. So everything you will need for 2018 is already settled. You are not even saying amen like someone that believes. You know, you are used to hard life and hard work. So believing this side is always difficult for you. Man must struggle. That's what you know. Forever. Uh, please, receive this thing from them. You now. You, you, you. You, the next person now. Get up, receive this thing from them. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Every day is God's day. But the day you believe is your own day. And God being a covenant keeper has ordained that today somebody will be settled. Yeah. My covenant will I not break nor alter the word that have gone out of my mouth. There is what we call timely settlement. And this settlement of today is timely. What do I mean by timely settlement? For a settlement to be timely means that it is needed now. There is something needed in your life now that, to, that you will not need to wait for next month. And I believe God has the capacity to do it. Yeah. No wonder David said, God is my refuge. A very present help in time of trouble. Or in time of need. Timely settlement. When a settlement becomes timely, protocols will be broken. I see God breaking protocols to give someone a settlement today. Yeah. Hannah has been praying, sobbing, praying. But one day, say with me, one day. She came into the temple and met the prophet. He said, woman, go. Let thy countenance be no more sad, for God has had thee. After that proclamation, what happened? Samuel appeared. I don't know what looked like Samuel in your life. You have prayed. You have fasted. You have sown seed. Today, the God of settlement has remembered you. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But the God of all grace, 
who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and what? So your days of suffering, they are coming to an end. I say that suffering is ending today. How do I know? Surely there is an end. There is an end. Say to your neighbor, there is an end. Now, the day you decide it to end will be the day it will end. Surely there is an end. And thy expectation shall not be cut off. There is a woman in the Bible that decided her end. Scripture didn't give us her name. They only called her the woman with the issue of blood. She has suffered this loss of blood for a good 12 years. But that day she decided that this thing will end. She only heard that Jesus was on his way to Jairus' house. So she intercepted. She intercepted Jesus. In fact, scripture didn't tell us again whether Jesus finally got to Jairus' house. Scripture didn't tell us again. But on, he was on his way to Jairus' house and somebody intercepted him. She said, if only I will touch. Now, it is for one thing for you to touch. It's another thing for the world to touch you. It's for one thing for the world to enter you. It's another thing for you to enter the world. If only I will touch the hem of his garment. What did you propose in your heart to see today that would determine the beginning of your settlement? If only I will touch. Now, when you are ready to break protocols, God is also ready to break protocols. The protocols you are willing to break will determine the protocol God will break for you. Do you know that that woman broke protocol? <laughs> In the Jewish law, <laughs> if you carry such ailments, you don't enter where normal people enter. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Huh? But she, she defied the law. She broke the law. God said, you broke the law? Man, I will break my own too. She entered. Scripture says she came in the press and touched. We are going to look at that word press in many dimensions. She came in a press and touched. She came in a press and touched. And Jesus said, somebody touch me. Peter said, Abba. Can't you see everybody touching you? There is a touch and there is a touch. Touch, past touch. You say, I know somebody touched me because something just do win. Something just move now. She said, I am the one. He said, go. Thy faith has made thee whole. What it started, she said in her heart. Do you know the day you decide that a problem will end, that is the day it will end. Oh! So if you mean it that God will settle you today, he will not shift it to tomorrow. Withhold no good from whom it is due. When it is in thy power of thy hand to act. He said, do not say to your neighbor, go and come tomorrow when you have a right there with you. Should I tell you this? God has all it takes to settle you now. You are not saying amen like a believer. God has all it takes to settle you now. All it takes to settle you now. One sure way we can press into our settlement, one sure way, we're going to look at many of them, is to press for the love of God. Any 
anything that can break your love for God down will break you down. Will increase your suffering. Check it. Anytime you reduce in your love for God, your affection for God, your, the doors of suffering just open and say, ah, I don't they wait for you since. He said for a long time, Israel was without the true God and without the teaching priest and without the law. And scripture recorded that a great vexation came upon the people. Great vexation there means thick hardship. Obonge suffering. Suffering that can be seen in the hair, seen in the clothes, seen in the shoe. Suffering that can be seen in the face. And a great vexation came upon the people. They were without the law. Without a teaching priest. And he said, the Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. You don't run, even naturally, you don't run after someone who doesn't have your interest. Heart, answer to heart, deep, call it to deep. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. God is too busy. He has too many things to attend to than to be hanging around on serious people. Some people are never serious with their life. That is why Satan has gotten an opportunity to frustrate every good thing that will take place in their life. So people are so careless with their life. And yet they want a serious God to give them attention. The Lord is with you while you are with him. If you forsake him, he will also do what? Forsake you. He said, return to your first love. O Galatians, who has bewitched you? Did you start in the spirit to end up in the flesh? Return to your first love. When your love for God is restored, the hand of God's restoration begins to bring everything back. Everything back. Hear me? Activity in church is not a proof of love for God. I heard Bishop Abiyoye said, you can be active and not be productive. Somebody can be active in church, no results. Hear me? I, the Lord, search at the heart. Where is your heart? So loving God is the gateway to all round rest. All round rest. There is nothing I am looking for now that has not been programmed to happen. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Is settled. Is settled. God has settled it. He has settled it. He brings it out in times and season. The blessing they come one after the other. Is settled. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that the Gentiles do seek after shall be added. Why? Because they have been settled. They have been settled. So loving God is the gateway to all round settlement. The deeper your love for God, the faster your settlement will happen. When a husband knows that the wife loves him and the woman knows that the husband loves him, he does, she doesn't beg for money for clothes. True or false? He doesn't beg for money for shoes. He doesn't beg for anything. 
Why? It flows. Say with me, it flows. It flows. And Jesus said, if you abide in my love, if you abide in my love, I and my father, we will come and make ourselves manifest in thee. We will come and show you. We will come and display our splendor upon your life. Life becomes a struggle when you lack an understanding of your love for God. Love for God is not coming to church. You can be in church and not be in touch. You can be in church and not be in fellowship with God. Somebody can be in church now, his mind is already in Angwarukuba. I'm telling you something. So your understanding of your love for God is what determines the blessing that flows. It flows. You hear me? This thing flows. Oh. Scripture says he daily load us. What is load? Anything you can carry with your hand without stress is not a load. But anything that you require effort to carry is a load. Am I saying something to somebody? He daily load us with benefits. Benefits. So you now define your love for God. Because getting things done, getting things accomplished is not a function of struggle. It's not a function of effort. Scripture said the, the race is not to the swift. Neither your battle to the strong. Nor your favor to men of skill. He said time and chance happen to them all. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will show compassion on whom I will show compassion. So it's not of him that will it. Not of him that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. You have struggled enough. It's time to trace back. I say it's time to trace back. When your love for God is defined, the lines will begin to fall for you in pleasant places. Some people see serving God like a burden. That's why it is a burden. But when it comes to you like a delight, man, you no longer struggle. When you are in love with God, you occupy a priority place in his heart. Now, even naturally, <laughs> people that occupy a priority place in your heart, when things are in your hand, they are the people that come to your mind first. Am I saying the truth? That is how it is with God. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him? You hear me? Define your love for God and your settlement is confirmed. Your marital settlement is confirmed. Your career settlement is confirmed. If you are saying amen, say it better. Amen. amen. When your love for God is defined, who fights you enter trouble? You can't fight God's lovers. Come. As gentle as you are, can you withstand anybody troubling your wife? No. Why? Because of the love I have for her. Because of what? Love. Did you hear him? Go and sit down. <laughs> Because of the love I have for her, I can't withstand anybody troubling my wife. So if anybody wants to trouble his wife, he will fight the person. Are you know what I'm saying now? Now, everybody seated here, let me tell you, maybe you don't know. Every human being has 1% madness. 
no matter how gentle the person is, everybody here has 1% madness. Am I correct? The day that 1% comes out, you say, ah, so you two, they talk. You never see anything. My own is 2%. <laughs> the Praise God. That's why if someone is troubling what belongs to you or what should come to you, God said, I will trouble them that trouble thee. And I will recompense them with what? Tribulation. Do you know the meaning of tribulation? Trouble in every nation. Anywhere they enter, I position trouble for them. So you can't be a lover of God and people will be ganging up against you and be succeeding. You say, surely they shall gather, but not by me. Anyone that gather against you shall fall for your sake. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. But that scripture is only for lovers. Lovers of God who have secured a priority place in the heart of God. I remember one anointed pastor who decided to speak roughly to my spiritual father. Speak roughly to the wife. <laughs> he said, even if your head is not correct, don't you know that she's my wife? For crossing that line, you will pay for it. And he's still paying. There's what we call instrumental judgment. They punish you instrumentally. So he's collecting his punishment instrumentally. After one year, they give him another instrumental punishment. Do you know why? He challenged and talked roughly to the wife. God said, you are the apple of my eyes. <laughs> Is anyone that trouble you, I will trouble them. I will be an enemy to your enemy and an adversary to your what? So whoever is behind the unsettlement, today the hand of God will touch them. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Your love for God is a strong persuasion that nothing, say with me nothing, can be withheld from you. Your love for God is a strong persuasion that nothing can be withheld from you. It may be difficult for everybody here to get something from me. But it may not be difficult for her to get it from me. True of us. Because if you don't give it, you will not have peace. True of us. So you must be persuaded in your heart. That because of the love you have for God, He cannot withhold it from you. So, if you love God now, will God withhold your husband from locating you for marriage? No, answer me. If I love God now with unreserved passion for the advancement of the church, will He withhold me from prospering? No, answer. If he does, he will be breaking scriptures. Why? The husband man that laboreth shall be what? Not the second partaker, the first. The first partaker. So as I am growing with passion for the advancement of his house, men, he will also be growing with passion for the flourishing of my life and my family. 
So define your love for God. That is the primary factor that must be said. The moment this one is settled, every other, every other thing will fall in place. Every other thing will just fall in place. So the cheapest way to secure settlement without stress is to increase your love for God. Increase your love for God. When your love for God is increased, <laughs> I am the one that opens and no man can close. And I want to let you know something this morning. Jesus has the key in my favor so he cannot use the key against me. Have you used the key against your wife? Can you lock the door against your children? It's not possible. The key cannot be used against me, but the key can only be used in my favor. Now, let me shock someone this morning. Can God settle a matter in the favor of your adversary? No, please, uh, before you say no, be, 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 be sure. If somebody is fighting me now for what he cannot stand to prove right from scripture, will even though he has gotten a 20 from choir, 10 from CCU, and they are mounting pressure, now we now appear before the court. Will God settle a matter in their favor? They say majority carries the vote. I want you to hear this. God cannot settle any matter. Say with me, any matter. In the favor of your enemy. God cannot settle any matter in the favor of your adversary. If they, if they place you, place your adversary, who will God take first? No, who will God pick first? That's what I want to say to someone. I just had it now. You will win. Yeah. Over that matter, you will win. Yeah. So your love for God is the back breaker against every opposition contending with your settlement. Your love for God is the back breaker No wonder every time you increase your love for God, your enemies become more hopelessly helpless. Hopelessly help, hopelessly what? Helpless. Why? You mean that with all what I'm doing, this person is still loving God and serving God? Yes, he's finishing you. Someone that is growing in love for God is getting more immune with the presence of God. Because love for God goes with presence. It goes with a presence. So nothing, say with me, nothing, nothing. can keep a God's lover unsettled on the issues of life. A God's lover remain unsettled is anti-scriptural. My counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. My counsel shall stand and I will do all of my good pleasure. Your love for God positions you for continuous settlement. The part of the just is like a shining light. That shined brighter. This is an era of new dawn. God is settling you with new blessings. 
that will make new dawn a reality. Somebody is not saying amen. amen. For you to be in this kind of settlement, number one, you have to be called out of darkness. Paul said he has translated us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ, into his marvelous light. So the blessings of settlement is for those that are called. Faithful is he that called thee, who also will do it. God will settle you with plenty things this year. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. Somebody's own has already started. Yeah. The blessing of settlement is for those that are called. If a man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away and all things are become new. There is a place where you need to be for settlement to happen for you. Some people are only found in the wrong place, so the right things never meet them. When you are in your right place, you have your right due, your right blessing, your right encounter. You meet the right people. Because God's settlement for you can be channeled through men. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It can be channeled through your destiny helpers. It can be channeled through your prophetic helpers. So when you are found in the right place, you meet the right blessings. So you must be called out. In the world, there is what they call selection. Or nomination. I don't know whether the two are the same. But all I know now, there's another one they call adoption. Am I correct? When you are adopted, what happens? Does voting count in adoption? Voting does not count in adoption. Should I tell you something? You are adopted. So you will not struggle to get a blessing. Somebody is not saying amen. Anything you struggle to get is a sign that God is not involved. How do I know? Let's look at it from scripture. Romans chapter 8. Let's take it from verse 28 so that we can catch it properly. Verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good. To them that do what? To them who are called according to his what? Look at the next verse now. For whom he did for no, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Verse 30. Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and them who whom he justified, them he also glorified. The next verse now. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Go to the next verse now. Who he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? How many things? That's why I said anything you are struggling to get is a sign that God is not involved. You don't struggle to take your heritage. You don't struggle to take your blessings appointed. Why? You are the beloved of God. So you shouldn't be struggling for what has been appointed. And scripture says, he performed for me the things that is appointed unto me. And many such things are with him. Job 23 verse 14. He performed. 
So God will settle somebody today. Yeah. Number two. For your settlement to reach you, settle down in his house. In Mount Zion, there shall be what? And the house of Jacob shall do what? You can only possess your settlement in Zion. Zion is a place of settlement. It's a place of strength. It's a place of recovery. A place of restoration. No wonder David cried out, Send me help from thy sanctuary. Your help is in a place. So you must locate the place. You can't secure help outside the sanctuary. You can't secure help outside this sanctuary. You can't secure your settlement outside this sanctuary. So your settlement begins from a sanctuary. So if forces have been fighting your settlement outside, the moment you step into the house, they are disarmed. I say they are disarmed. I say they are disarmed. And I speak to someone here. Whoever and whatever has been fighting your settlement from manifesting, the hand of God go against them today. Yeah. Whoever vowed that your settlement will not take place, I command their bands broken in the name of Jesus. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are safe. Any man or woman that said over his dead body, will he live to see you carry that blessing? I stand as a son of Oyedeko. I confirm their dead body. Yeah. The person said over his dead body. I confirm their dead body. Yeah. But as for that blessing, you will carry it with your hand. Amen. As for that blessing, you will carry it on your hand. Amen. That's your wedding gun will enter your hand this year. Amen. The quicker your amen, the faster your own. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Whoever vowed that your head will not be lifted. Whoever, I say whoever, vowed that your head will not be lifted. I decree that they go down for you. Yeah. I decree they go down for you. Yeah. I decree they go down for you. Yeah. Because this is Zion. This is Zion. Your place of advantage. This is Zion. Number three. Be settled with the world. Be settled with the word. Psalm 119 verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. And in the mother prayer, Jesus said, as it is in heaven, so let it be on earth. Whatever is settled in heaven must manifest on the earth. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. And everything that concerns you has already been settled. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So the guarantee for your settlement is the settled word. So you need to settle down with the word for your solution to be in your hand. For the reality of your settlement to manifest in your hand. You need to settle down with the word so that your experience will not be deceiving you. 
Peter had an experience in fishing. So when Jesus told him, let down your net for a catch. Which catch? You have never fished before, so you don't have experience. If you know when the time fish appear, you will you understand what I'm saying. But he said, nevertheless, at thy word. The word settled it. Should I tell you this? The word controls climate. The word controls environment. The word controls things. Scripture says he upholded all things by the word of his power. He controls all things. He changes all things. He repositions all things. He shapes all things by the word of his power. So every time he sends his word, settlement takes place. Scripture says he sent his word and it healed them and delivered them. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not. 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 Return unto me void. The prophet said, according to my word. <laughs> he didn't say according to the word of the Lord. According to my word. By this time, a cup of wheat will be sold for three shekels. Elijah said, according to my word, there shall be no rain. I block the heavens according to my word. Should I tell you something? Even before I became a pastor, I knew the power of my word. According to my word. Should I surprise you? If a native doctor, say with me, native doctor, is sure that what he's saying is going to come to pass, why will I doubt my own? Why will I doubt my own? If he has a backing, I have a more sure backing. That's why if I say be blessed, you are blessed. Yeah. Somebody didn't catch it. Yeah. If I curse, it sticks. If I bless, my stamp. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. So shall my word be. He that is born of the flesh is flesh. He that is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. Should I surprise you now? Your settlement is in your mouth. Your settlement is in your mouth. Your mouth can provoke blessings and your mouth can provoke sufferings. Your mouth can make you and your mouth can scatter you. Your mouth can settle you, your mouth can unsettle you. Hidden in the tongue is the power of life and death. He said, them that love you shall eat the fruit thereof. Spirits don't control the earth. They don't have legal license to operate here. We are the one. We are carrying the spirit in a human flesh. So Jesus said, <laughs> the centurion said unto Jesus, I'm a man under authority. I say to one, go and he go. And to another, come and they come. He says, speak the word and my servant shall be healed. And Jesus said, I've not seen one with such great faith in Israel. He said, go, thy servant is made what? Whole. I say to you today, by prophetic grace and fire, that door that was shut, we open more better. If you are saying amen, you say better amen. amen. So, words transmit what? They transmit presence. They transmit spirit. John 6 verse 63. These words that I speak unto you, 
they are spirit and they are what? Life. So when you know the power back up in the world, you don't allow any evil man to unsettle your life. You create multiple holes in their body. Multiple holes. You disfigure them spiritually, physically. You must learn how to use the power of the world. Hear me? If you don't have anything to say, God has nothing to confirm. Because he said, I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Who say you will not marry? The person you will, you will see the person roasted by fire. Who say you will not carry your baby? Hear me? That baby will come and the person will expire. Who say you will not prosper? Hear me and hear me where? The person will dry like a punk. You, you don't understand what I mean? The person will dry like firewood. Whatever the person has been using against you, I command fire upon their altar. I command fire upon their altar. Whoever they are using to unsettle you, I invoke vengeance upon their head. In the name of Jesus. Every shooter of arrow against your blessing. I command the arrow to backfire. I command the arrow to backfire. Whoever vowed you will not rest. I decree let the God of Yerebo lead them to rest. Let the God of Yerebo lead them to rest. Anyone that delights in your tears. I decree sorrow will not depart from their camp. Weeping will not depart from their camp. Sorrow will not depart from their camp. Whoever vowed that that blessing will not come. Whoever vowed that, we, that they will find the blessing from coming to pass. I decree the vengeance of timely death upon them. Timely death upon them. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Anyone that sponsored tears for you. I stand representing Bishop David Oerekbo, my father. That tears be converted to laughter. That tears be converted to laughter. That tears be converted to laughter. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Any hand that has withheld what you are due for. <laughs> Hey, any hand that has withheld what you are due for, I decree, let that hand be tied loose now. Let your loins be loose for your favor. I put upon them wherever they are divine urgency to release that blessing. Whichever protocol or manipulative device they have used to catch you and catch the blessing, I command it scattered in the name of Jesus. Rise up to your feet, everybody. Your mouth is your license for your settlement. Begin to call what you want to see now. Your mouth is your license. He said I will do the very thing that I hear you say. Lift up your voice, declare what you want to see. Jacob said, I will not let thee go except you bless me. Lord, today you must settle my matter. I refuse to remain on the same spot. My change of level must manifest. Lift up your voice. Declare what you want to see. Call 
fought for your blessing. Any witchcraft power that they are using to collect your wedding gun in the dream. I decree let fire roast that witch. Declare what you want to see. That delay is over. Delay must not continue. You are taking what belongs to you. That expectation is turning to testimony. It's turning into reality. Declare what you want to see. God is not a liar. Declare what you want to see. Declare what you want to see. Declare what you want to see. He said that we hasten my word to perform it. You will carry your miracle babies. That new business breakthrough must answer. You must marry early this year. You have suffered lack enough. Blessings will begin to flood you. Flood your house. Flood your office. That business is to crawl again. That business must flourish. It must flourish. Whatever place a limit over you, I command it to expire. Le Katariada Zero Talia Bebredino Sato Jekutero in Gayaga Lero Baliata and Zodo no Kuperikata Jeklo Pebre Ero Parota Jeru Tapali Andete Nego Dobrike Tuseso. Jesus ya ketaneta le pereke toria tanados je le pera dana ilado neboro tu salate Thank you Father In Jesus mighty name we have prayed I understand the place of the prophetic when it comes to settlement. Scripture says, Believe the Lord thy God, and thou shalt be established. Believe also his prophets, so shalt thou prosper, so shalt thou be settled. That woman ran to the prophet. My husband, thy servant, is dead. And he prayed, came back. Because she believed. A prophet you don't believe does not have anything in store for you, even though God has something in store for you. A prophet you don't believe cannot be a channel to the delivery of your blessing. That's why many have been stranded in church while their settlement has been waiting. Jesus said, if thou canst believe, thou shalt see the glory of the Lord. I never lobbied or wished to come to Lafia. I am sent. I am sent. I am sent by the sender. I am backed by the sender. And I know what I am sent here to do must prosper. And I know what I am sent to declare here must be confirmed. I pray for someone here today. Whatever has limited your settlements, their bands over your life is shattered. Whatever you are due for in this new dawn era, by prophetic grace and connectivity, 
I command your portion surrender. Whoever is connected to your settlement, financial, material, marital, I command their loins loose for your favor. If you are saying amen, say a better amen. By the four winds of the spirit, I decree supernatural supply for you. Any power contending with your settlement, let them go down by fire. In the name of Jesus. I speak with authority. From today you cease to suffer. From today your suffering come to an end. Whatever look like a mockery upon your life and your family. Let it be turned into a testimony. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Anything you have been struggling to get. By prophetic intervention. I decree, let that blessing answer cheaply. The angel assigned for your settlements, north, south, east, and west, I move them in your favor. In the name of Jesus. Whoever is that personality that vowed a vow over their dead body, will they see you be settled? I stand on this altar today. I confirm their dead body. I command the angels of death to spread their wings over them. In the name of Jesus. Whoever that you need to be connected to for your days of restoration to start by the four winds of the spirit, I command divine connectivity. I command divine connectivity. No more delay. No more delay. Whatever look like a garment of shame and reproach. Making people reproach you. Making blessings to be diverted away from you. That evil garment. That evil veil. Be consumed by fire. In the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. Lift up your voice and begin to celebrate God. In Jesus' name we pray. Your settlement begins with you accepting Jesus Christ. If you are here, you are not born again. But you made up your mind that today's service will not pass you by. Wherever you are, inside and outside, put your right hand on your chest as I'm doing now. And say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my love. Be my savior. In Jesus' name, I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, put your hands together for Jesus. Carry your bag and your Bible and come quickly. You pray that prayer with me. Come quickly. God bless you. You pray that prayer with me wherever you are. God bless you. That's the best decision anybody can make. Put your hands together for Jesus for them as they come. If you are coming, come quickly. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Your settlement has started. Your settlement has started. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Unto them that come unto you shall we no wise cast out. Father, they have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Every guilt of their past, they are rolled away. Amen. Every cause and accusation of the wicked, they are blotted out. Amen. As this oil come upon you, your settlement begins now. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. No more accusation of the enemy. Amen. No more cause of the wicked. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. From today, you will not struggle. Amen. From today, I decree you will not suffer. Amen. From today, Things will not be difficult for you again. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Put those hands together for Jesus. Just turn right now and follow this man. Turn and follow him. God bless you. Lift up your voice. Hallelujah.
Today is our Thanksgiving day. Bring out your Thanksgiving offering to seal your settlement.